Today I'm going to paint this highway scene. I love doing these evening or morning skies in watercolor. If you're curious about what paints I use, what brushes I use, check out my supplies video. I put it in the description down below. So I hope you get something out of this. Click that subscribe button if you haven't done that yet. And let's get into it. Most of the time when I paint, I do a drawing before I start. Today, I'm going to skip the drawing. I have an idea of what I want to paint, and I'm just going to go for it. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pre-wet my entire paper. I'm going to start off with a really light value, and I'm going to use some cerulean blue and some cobalt teal light. I'm going to cover the whole paper here. Now I'm going to switch to some thicker pigment, some warmer tones, some cadmium orange. I'm going to put a little bit of cadmium red. Do a variety of brush strokes. Try to mix it up a little bit. Now, I'm going to go back into some of these cooler colors, some thicker pigment near the top of the paper. And again, everything's still wet, so this is going to blend with whatever I painted below. Back into my warmer colors. And this is thicker paint, and I want to do a variety of brush strokes again. I don't want these strokes to all look the same. That's easy to do. I want to make different shapes with every stroke. And the trick to these skies, I've talked about this in some of my other videos, is understanding how much water is on your brush, how much pigment is on your brush, and how wet the paper is. And you get different effects if you change any one of these variables. Now I'm going to go back into some of these cooler colors. It's really thick paint here. And this is going to be the darkest part of the clouds. And you just kind of do this until it feels right and then you stop. So here I have some thicker pigment and I'm going to start adding in some buildings in the distance. I always think it's amazing how it brings everything together when you put some earth underneath the sky. It suddenly starts to read like a sky. I want these buildings to be darker, kind of silhouetted against this morning sky. Just kind of finessing this until I think it's enough detail in the distance. taking a damp, clean brush, and I'm going to lift out some directional lines for this road. I think that makes so much of a difference when you get these lines in. You, you kind of know where to look. It's kind of starting to make sense a little bit. I'm going to lift off some detail on these buildings. Okay, I'm going to put a few darks here for some cars. This would kind of be the main car right here. Another thing that you can do to add some variety in these values is you can use your fingernail or a credit card and while it's still damp, you can scratch out a few highlights here and there. Just kind of makes it a little more interesting. 
gonna add in some highlights on the tops of these cars if I can. I'm gonna go ahead and lift off a little bit of this windshield, it's pretty dark. So again, I'm taking a clean, damp brush and just lifting off some of that thicker pigment. I'm gonna go ahead and add some darker, some thicker pigment on the back of the car. So you can see that these cars are starting to come together a little bit. Okay, I think that this foreground could use a little bit more texture. It'll bring this part of the painting forward and it'll push the distance even further back. So I'm gonna load up my brush with dark pigment, not too much water, and then I do some dry brush. I'm turning my brush sideways to get this effect. And after I kind of get the general shape that I like, I go back and I grab a rigger brush that's thinner, and I get some of this thicker pigment on it, and I make a few branches. Helps it to read a little bit more like a tree. Still scratch out a few branches, a few more details in these areas. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my painting sideways because I want to paint a few light poles. And I can make a straighter line most of the time if I turn the painting sideways. I'm kind of at an odd angle here with the camera, but I'll see what I can do. crooked. I really don't like that one at all. It's times like these that I wish I had an undo button. I'm going to turn it into a building. It's not ideal for the composition, but I think I'd rather have a building there than a crooked light pole. It's just going to drive me crazy. That's fine. <laughs> Sometimes you just make mistakes and have to go with them. My paper is starting to dry a bit more, and so I think it's dry enough to go in and put some detail underneath some of these cars. I'm kind of just doing this until I think it's enough. Until it reads like a car and then I try and stop. I'm going to put on some of these side mirrors. I'm going to add a few more directional lines just to help it read a little bit more. And it also connects this car to the foreground. It's important to connect your darks if you can. A little more texture for this road here. Helps kind of lead your eye in to the painting a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to use some thicker paint. I'm going to add in some brake lights on some of these cars. I'm taking really thick cadmium red. And I'm gonna 
you can mix it with some cad orange or a lighter color. I'm going to add in these brake lights. If you make them too big, just lift some of them off. Okay, now I have some gouache and I'm going to highlight a little bit of this car, this kind of the focal point. I don't know if it's the star of the show, but maybe the co-star of the show. I want the top of the car to kind of stand out from the background. And that is it for this painting. I hope you enjoyed painting with me and got something out of this tutorial. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it already. And I'll catch you next time.